What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, and this is a list of my 10 favorite Hold Steady songs, which, if you are not familiar with the Hold Steady, thank you for checking this out. Um, I highly suggest you go check out. I will make a Spotify link. I'll put a link in the description of my Spotify um, top 10 of these songs. Not in this order. It will be in an order that I think is more conducive to like a listening experience. Um, opening songs, the the... Their first song ever will be the first song um, on that on that set list only because it is uh, on this list. Uh, but it will be one that makes sense. Uh, but anyways, check them out if you get the chance. They are a fantastic band. But anyways, the Hold Steady top 10 songs. I'm just going to go from 10 to 1. And then at the end of the video, I'll put the list on the screen. And again, the link to the songs on Spotify in the description. Uh, number 10, Stay Positive. Off the album called Stay Positive. Um... Musically, this is probably my least favorite song on this list by far. Like, it's also musically kind of, uh, it's a little too cheesy for me, a little too rah, rah, rah. But the lyrics are some of my, are obviously one of my top 10 favorites. Um, it's about being older in a scene that you've been part of long enough to now be the older generation where people who you were hanging out with back in the day now have kids who are hanging out with all of you in the same sort of scene. And it's sort of acknowledging that, yeah, okay, I'm getting older, but like the songs that used to like, I rally to, they're still rallying to. Um, and yeah, they look at me at that as that older guy, but with respect, you know, they knew I was down with the scene back in the day. Um, so I don't know. I think the sort of character that's captured in the song, the lyrics are fantastic. There's a lot of great lines about just like, youth and songs and the power of music and the power of like singing along with the crowd um it's just fantastic but then as someone who's an older person in a scene it's it's like i feel like yeah it's respectful yeah all that stuff anyways i like the song uh number nine the first night uh almost the complete opposite of stay positive a super duper depressing song um and it's really about a bunch of characters who drive the narrative of their first three albums. Um, Holly, Charlemagne, Gideon, and sort of this nameless narrator, um, who I'm pretty sure is madly in love with Holly. Um, and they're, and he's thinking back to the first night, you know, and how like we never got as high as we did on that first night. Now we're addicts. And like probably the line that depresses me more than anything is uh, I think they're all gathered because Holly is, you know, OD'd or is having drug, drug problems. And the singer comments that like, she never looked as beautiful as she did on that first night. And just a, just like, I don't know, a really sad looking back song about just like, wow, what we were when we started and it was like fun and indulgent. We were all beautiful people. And now we're just like these strung out, struggling to survive people. We each has their own problems. Um, and looking back on all the optimism and the hope and the beauty of that first night. I don't know. Absolutely powerful song. And the music is a little bit low key. Great little piano motif that goes through it. Um, oh, it's just, it's the ballad um, of the album. Just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic song. Um, yeah. Uh, number eight, A Slight Discomfort. This is sort of analogous, maybe, maybe comparable to the first night. It's, uh, a, it's a slow song. The closing track on Heaven Is Whenever, Heaven Is Whenever. Um, uh, and it's just kind of depressing. It's got this great, just again, sort of like ballady, low key, but simmering sort of melancholy vibe to the music. Um, it's not like an upbeat rocker. Um, it's definitely about some, a woman who's just like, I don't know, down on her luck or feeling down and out, or maybe just to that point. And like, he's trying to like, I don't know. I don't know what he's really trying to do. The narrator is, but he points out that like, you know, all these things she says are true or not. One of my favorite lines in which he rhymes princess with prince is. Um, you say you're a princess, but I've seen all the guys you've been with and none of them look like princes. Um, but it's just sort of this calling out this woman, like, hey, face reality type thing. Um, and it, it might hurt a bit, but it'll be a, just a slight discomfort. Something along those lines that he repeats a lot at the end. But just the overall vibe, like Heaven Is Whenever is the one album, like I don't, I don't think the rockers work, but all three of the slow songs are just home runs. And this one is just such a, uh, again, it's not upbeat, happy music, but it, it strikes emotions and the way he captures just the struggles of these people. Powerful. Craig Finn, 
Mason Lewis is. Um, number seven, The Weekenders, also off Heaven Is Whenever. This is part two to the song Chips Ahoy off Boys and Girls in America. Um, the, the narrator who hooked up with the girl who had psychic powers who could predict horse races um, or was using her predictive powers to win horse races in Chips Ahoy. He's kind of almost sounds like he's crawling back to her like, hey, man, let's have another one of these things where you make money on horses and we, you know, buy a lot of drugs and spend some time in a motel. Um, it's that kind of vibe. And yeah, I'll keep it a secret. I know, whatever, for whatever reason. She's probably saying, hey, I don't want to be see slumming with you. But he interprets it as, I don't want people to know that I'm betting on horses. I don't know. It's a it's a great sort of ambiguous, why is this such a secret type thing? Uh, but again, a slow burn in song kind of starts off really bare and sparse, really nice, powerful build up to the chorus, um, almost like triumphant in a way. I don't know. It's a really, really good feeling song. Uh, number seven, The Weekenders. Uh, number six, uh, Cattle and the Creeping Things, the second track off Separation Sunday. Um, just, just absolutely blitzkrieg of religious biblical references, all while talking about scoring drugs. And uh, the whole thing ends with a reference till some old lady comes to the door and says, Mackenzie Phillips doesn't live here anymore. Like, where's that random reference coming from? Is that a true story? Did they go try to buy drugs somewhere from a place where Mackenzie Phillips used to live? I don't know. Um, all fascinating stuff. You know what? That's another Frank Zappa connection, right? Through the mamas and the papas right there because there's a California Dreamin' reference in... Uh, Oh, uh, some Zappa song, right? Right? There's a Mamas and the Papas reference. Yeah. Uh, eat your sandwich. Um, we're turning again. There we go. Another, uh, Frank, an actual Frank Zappa connection. I'm actually going to drop this at the beginning of the video uh, for anybody watching this. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to tease it in the... Um, in the uh, in the title. But yeah, that's an actual Frank Zappa connection through the reference to the mamas and the papas. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's not the, the most direct reference, but uh, daughter of John, John, mama, okay, all that. All right, where were we? Yeah, Cattle and the Creeping Things. Fantastic song. High energy rocker, kind of a weird, spacey, slightly proggy thing uh, with just Finn going off lyrically. Oh yeah, just, and the biblical references are just absolutely fantastic. Um, number five is Positive Jam, um, the opener to their debut album, Almost Killed Me. Uh, starts off with just this guitar. Duh, nah, nah, nah. Craig Finn sort of talks things, his lyrics about we woke up in the 50s and all these struggles that we had. And then finally we get this crunch of just crazy guitar coming in. Um, and yeah, we're going to start things off with a positive jam because that's how you start off a career right there. Um, number four, How a Resurrection Really Feels, the closing track on Separation Sunday. And it feels like a resurrection. Like after you've gone through all these tales of like Holly and the drugs and the pimping and the prostitute and all the, the everything that's going on with these people's lives that just they're not able to make it work. The opening guitar riff of how a resurrection really works. Da -na 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 -na, you're just uplifting. And the song is like Holly talking from her sort of like coming to Jesus moment after like maybe ODing and seeing God, who knows? Uh, but Holly knows what a resurrection really feels like. And she's talking to the con congregation and there's a very just celebratory feel to it. And it ends with almost just like a, come on, like walk on down with us. Let's go outside and just celebrate. It's just such an amazing, amazing, uplifting, positive song. Probably should be higher on this list, but for some reason I have a, a real sweet spot for the next three. But if you rank that at number one, yeah, 100%. Agree with that. Number three, the opening track off Heaven Is Whenever, The Sweet Part of the City. A little sly guitar in the beginning. Just a really, it sounds like a nighttime song. Sounds like you're driving around a relatively empty city at night looking for something to do, looking for some, some sort of action of some sort. It feels alone and cold, um, struggling, but at the same time, beautiful and very emotional. And there's a line about how it's hard to get to the, how it's hard to get to the center of the universe, which is the liquor store because they're making a liquor run. There's a reference to like we need to go out and maybe get some more something. But and but how it's hard to get to the center of the universe, which is where the stores and the bars are, when you can't get your car off the curb. And like, why can't you get your car off the curb? Because you're already so effed up. Because you're like. You, you're, I don't know, you got a boot on it. You can't afford to put gas in it. Like just 
whatever interpretation you have, it's not positive. And that's sort of the struggle. There's even a line about how like we couldn't feel the pain because we were living it, right? That was our lives. Um, but still there was the sweet part of the city, which was the part with the bars and the restaurants. So anyways, powerful, powerful song. Just such an incredible portrait of struggling people just trying to make the most out of it. I uh, love it. Number two, killer parties. Celebration of killer parties, man. Closing track off their debut album, Almost Kill Me. Uh, great opening long, almost psych, uh, psych jam band, Rocky, just laying it down. Probably the slowest, most spaced out, more stoner rock groove they've ever laid down. And then Craig just comes in talking his talk. We find out Virginia really was for lovers, all these great things. And we just find out these killer parties are really killing me. And it just, it's the jam band. It's their jam song. And they really just like, it's, 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 it's just a beautiful, beautiful, transcendent, slow burn of a jam to close an album. Um, and number one, just the lyrics. Uh, it's your little hood rat friend off Separation Sunday. Uh, your little, uh, I mean, everything about it. Um, the narrator, I'm pretty sure your little hood rat friend, maybe I have this completely wrong, but this is how I've already seen it. I've always seen it. Your little hood rat friend is Holly. He's in love with Holly. Holly, however, is saving herself for the scene. So she's not going to have sex with him. And he really wants to get with her. And apparently there's a rumor going around that either he did. And so he's upset of it. Like, who said I ever got with your little hood rat friend? I'm never going to get with your little hood rat friend. And then the next line's like, oh, but your little hood rat friend got me high though. You know, so like he's hanging with her. They're buddies, but he wants more, but he's never going to get it. And he's frustrated and he's getting jumped down by the bus stop and cops are beating him up. And like life is hard, but. I don't know, he's hanging with his little hood rat friend or your little hood rat friend and just everything about this song. The opening line about how it hurts to be heartbroken and it sucks to be broke and hurt to be heartbroken and always being broke must be a drag. Like how she is just either, she's either broke and poor or heartbroken at all points in time. Like those those are the things that define her life. But And he's he's there for her, but at the same time, he's sick of it, but he wants her. I don't know. I love this. I love the character portrayal in that song. I think the lyrics are fantastic. I think it's just musically such a great song. Yeah, my number one, your little hood rat friend. That's what they look like right there. Um, please go listen to them. Like seriously, I'm going to put them in, uh, not in this order. Sorry. Um, but uh, I think they're all 10 worth listening to. And I think they complement each other well. So, um, so maybe I should put them in this order. Nah, I'm not going to. Um, cause I didn't hear them in this order. So, and I fell in love with them. So no one else has to. All right. That's it. That's all I got. I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, share, comment. Let me know your favorite Hold Steady songs. Um, and yeah, that's it. Please go listen. It will change your life. One more person starts, listens to Hold Steady. The world is a better place. Peace. Talk to you later.